Here's the first of the six Goswamis. Okay. I won't take time. We'll have a little reading tonight, but I don't know. So you have to grab the key. Oh, okay. I'm going to spin away. It's a gashi kibo. So we're going to read about Raghunath. We're going to read about I cannot say more. I took about 10 minutes. I said it. Home for a minute. All the body. We're going to read about Raghunath Das and begin Manashiksha. Manashiksha, yeah. But before that, we'll just sing the song for the six ghost moments. Namam Vishnu Padaya. Krishna Prasthaya Bhuttale Shri Makte Bhakti Vedanta Swami Bhakti Namane Nama Krishna Prasthaya Bhakti Vedanta Swami Namaste Saraswati Devi Koravani Pacharine Nervishe Sasunyavani Paschatya Deshatarane Namaste Saraswati Devi Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Adoita Grata Shiva to the six ghost warnings or you can't read it okay so i'll just we'll just uh chant this together we don't have so much time so this is on page 19 and you can just follow along krishna kirtana gananatana para mitambonadi Dira dira jana priya priya karo nirmat saro pujito Sri Chaitanya kripa bhava bhuvi bhuvo 
Varavahantarako Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghuyago Shri Jiva Gopalago Offer my respectful obeisances under the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Lasanathan Goswami, Sri La Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri La Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri La Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami are always engaged in chanting the holy name of Krishna and dancing. They are just like the ocean of love of God, and they are popular, both for the gentle and with the ruffians. Because they are not envious of anyone, whatever they are all pleasing to everyone. And they are full of fully blessed by Lord Chaitanya. Thus, they are engaged in missionary activities meant to deliver all the conditioned souls in the material universe. Nana Shastra Vikari Nai Pani Pano Karma Samsta Pano Chibuvane Anya Saranya Karo Radha Krishna Padara Vrinda Vajana Nande Namanta Liko Vande Rupa Sanatana Radhu Yago Shiva Gopala Offer my respectful obeisances under the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami. We are very expert in scrutinizingly studying all the revealed scriptures for the aim of establishing eternal religious principles for the benefit of all human beings. They are honored all over the three worlds, and they are worth taking shelter of because they are absorbed in the mood of the gopis and are engaged in the transcendental loving service of Sri Radha and Krishna. Sri Gauranga Gunanu Varna Sridhino Shraddha Sridham Yavido Papa Tapa Nikitano Tamitita Govinda Ganamita Anandan Budivar the Naikanipano Yanishtarako Vande Rupa Sanatano Raghuyago Sri Gopalano After my respectful obeisances under the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanatan Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Swami Sri Jiva Goswami and Sri Gopala Bhakti Goswami, who are very much enriched in understanding Lord Chaitanya, who are thus expert in narrating his transcendental qualities that can purify all conditioned souls from the reactions of their sinful activities by pouring upon them transcendental songs about Govinda. As such, they are very expert in increasing the limits of the ocean of transcendental bliss, and they are the saviors of the living entities from the devouring mouth of liberation. Chattvatur namase shamandalapati shirinam saratu chavai budvadina ganesha kalkarnaya nakanta shilo gopi bhava risamrita budhidari Kalala Madna Mahu Vande Rupa Sanatana Raghu Yago Shri Jiva Gopala Yago Obeisance is under the six Goswamis, namely Shri Rupa Goswami, Shri Sanatana Goswami, Shri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, and Shri Raghunath Das Goswami, Shri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami, who kicked off all association of aristocracy as insignificant in order to deliver the poor conditioned souls. They accepted loincloths, treating themselves as mendicants, 
but they are always merged in the ecstatic ocean of the gopi's love for krishna always and repeatedly in the waves of that ocean kujad koki laham after my respectful obeisance, these under the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Sanat, Tang Goswami, Sri Raghunath, Bhakti Goswami, Sri Raghunath, Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Gopala Bhakta, Sri Gopala Bhakta Goswami, who are always engaged in worshiping Radha and Krishna in the transcendental land of Vrindavan. Trees full of fruits and flowers, which have under their roots, all valuable gems and jewels. The ghost armies are perfectly competent to bestow upon the living entities the greatest boon of the goal of life. Sankhya Purvaka Namagana Nativi Kalalavasi Krito Nidrahara Vihara Kadi Vito Chaganta Dino Chayo Radha Krishna Vina Shmite Madhurina Nandena Samohito Vande Rupa Sanatana Radhiyato Viva Rupa Radhiyato after my respectful obeisance is under the six Goswami's name, which we would put Goswami, Sri Sanatana Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami. Who are engaged in the chanting of the holy names of the Lord and bowing down in scheduled measurements. In this way, they utilize their valuable lives. And in executing these devotional activities, they conquered over eating and sleeping. And we're always meek and humble, enchanted by remembering the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Gayanto Chakada Hare Guna Varam Baba Vibhuta Muda Vande Rupa Sanatana After my respectful obeisance is under the six Goswamis, namely Sri Rupa Goswami, Sri Lasanatha Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta. Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopala Bhatta Goswami, who are sometimes on the bank of Radhika, or the shores of the Jamuna, and sometimes at Vamsi Bhatta. There they appear just like madmen in the full ecstasy of love for Krishna, exhibiting different transcendental symptoms in their bodies, and they were merged in the ecstasy of Krishna consciousness. Hey Rod, hey Raja Devi, ke chalani te. Hey Nanda, Suno Kuta. Sri Govardhan, Kavanjali, Kavindivane Kuta. Goshanta Viti Sarvato Rajapure, ke der Mahadivala. Vande Rupa Sri Jiva Gopala Gopala After my respectful obeisance is under the six Goswamis, 
Goswami, Sri Sanatana Goswami, Sri Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, Sri Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Jiva Goswami, and Sri Gopala Bhakta Goswami, who were very expert, they, who were chanting very loudly everywhere in Vrindavan, chanting, Queen of Vrindavan, Radha Rani, O Lalita, O son of Nanda Maharaj, where are you all now? Are you just on the hill of Govardhan? Or are you under the trees on the bank of the Jamuna? Where are you? These were their moods in executing Krishna consciousness. Sato Swami Ki So a little history of the life of Raghunath Das. Tonight or tomorrow, we'll read uh, some of the verses from his Manashiksha. So you, the word mana means mind and shiksha means instruction. So basically Raghunath Das, he wrote 11 verses. His mind, hey, it's like Kumar San. Um, instructing his mind. Uh, to Krishna and uh, assist him in becoming Krishna conscious. And so in, in the instructions are very helpful for us because basically he points out, you know, the way the mind is working and how we need to instruct it so that the mind will become our friend instead of our enemy, just like Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, that if, you're, if you become master of your mind, in other words, if the mind surrenders and does what the soul wants, then it becomes the friend, and it's very powerful, very useful. The mind is a, a great instrument, but if we if we don't master it, and it masters us, then it will be our worst enemy. And especially if uh, we want to engage in... Uh, what's called uh, Raghunuga Bhakti or the spontaneous loving service to the Lord, which is an, is an aspect, it can be an aspect of sadhana bhakti. And sadhana bhakti or bhakti yoga practices, vaiti bhakti, regulations. And then there's um, Raghunuga Bhakti, where one, it's okay, you can go on the next one, where, where Raghunuga Bhakti, um, one follows the, the, the sadhana, but uh, one actually cultivates a, a desire to worship Krishna and serve Krishna in the mood of the uh, inhabitants of Vrindavan. And that's the special blessing of Lord Chaitanya, uh, is that uh, Lord Chaitanya, he's called by Rupa Goswami as Maha Vadanaya, the most merciful incarnation, because he's giving this this level of love for God. So anyone who's a, a follower of Lord Chaitanya eventually will develop this uh, desire, this strong desire uh, to serve Krishna in Vrindavan. Because that was the mood of Lord Chaitanya, and that's what he taught. And all of his followers, like the six Goswamis, were also in that mood. And it's by associating with these great devotees who have this mood that we're able to get that mood ourselves. And that's the, actually the qualification to worship Krishna in the mood of the gopis is to have this strong desire. It's called greed. And so one has to have this greed. And the only way we get that greed is by the association of others who have that greed. So somewhere along the line, in, in one life or another of practicing Krishna consciousness, it's not that it's a one lifetime deal. It can be. But generally speaking, we'll see that those in this life who have this greed uh, to to worship Krishna in the, in the mood of the bridge Vasis. Um, they got it somewhere. 
past life. And, and so I'm bringing this point up is that we don't have to worry. You know, we just have to follow in the footsteps of the Acharya and worship Lord Chaitanya, uh, worship the six Goswamis. We're associating with them. Every time we chant their names, every time we read their books, we are in their vibration. We're, they're like planets. They're like the sun when we come into their orbit. And so we're in that orbit. And eventually, there'll be a time where this greed will awaken within our hearts. And when it does, then we can sincerely begin that practice. Even if we may be on a very advanced platform of, of bhakti, or we may not, we cannot say. But one cannot really begin this uh, to follow in the footsteps of the bridge vases until one has a strong desire. Otherwise, it's artificial. And then in the Manashiksha, Raghunath Goswami, he points out that you, you cannot uh, take up this practice of Raghunath Bhakti if you still have a desire for prestige. If you're still looking for approval from others and wanting to be res respected by others, a spontaneous path, then it will become contaminated and will become degraded. So one actually has to be on a very high level, uh, you know, beyond an art and everything. Uh, and um, then one also has to have the greed. And that will come about through the mercy of the Lord sometime or other. And if we pray for it and we want it, to uh, practice purely, to develop pure bhakti. That's our main focus, just to develop pure bhakti. See the anarchists within the heart and let them go. We don't have to hold on to them. But if we're holding on to them, then they'll stay there. So a brief history of the life of Raghunath Das Goswami. So these, this Manashiksha, these 11 verses, are written by uh, Raghunath Das. And then there's a commentary on them by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. What we will be reading. So come on over, Daja. Okay. So Raghunath Das Goswami, he appeared in a respected and very wealthy family of the Kayasta landholders in a village called Krishnapur or Saptagram within the Huguli district of West Bengal around the year of 1494. So, so when, was, when did Lord Chaitanya appear? He appeared in uh, 14, I think uh, 20 or 30 years before that. So when Lord, when Lord Chaitanya was uh, already Beginning the Sankirtan movement, Raghunath Das was a little baby. Okay. So Raghunath Das's father's name was Sri Govardhan Maju Mandara. Sri Govardhan's older brother was named Haranya Maju Mandara. Although both brothers were opulent landowners, they were devoutly religious and maintained and faith in the Vaishnava sadhus. The renowned devotee of Lord Goranga and the Acharya of the Holy Name, Srila Haridas Thakur, used to visit uh, the house of Raghunath Das's uh, parents. The master the royal priest, Sri Yadunandan Acharya, was an intimate disciple of Sri Adjoita Acharya and a close friend of Haridas Thakur. So, 
Raghunath Das's uncle and father were great to were great um, had great respect for the Vaishnavas and the Sadhus, and their family priest was Yadunandana Acharya, who's a disciple of Sri Adwaita Acharya. And uh, Haridas Thakur used to visit their house, and Haridas Thakur is a great friend of Adwaita Acharya and Yadunanda Acharya. So these these Vaishnavas, these great elderly Vaishnavas, they are considered to be like of the Chaitanya tree and branches. Okay, and Yadunana Acharya was the initiating spiritual master of Raghunath Das. So he was also their family priest, but he was also his initiating spiritual master. So Yadunana Acharya is a disciple of Agwaita Acharya, and Raghunath Das is a disciple of Yadunana Acharya, initiating disciple. So in his childhood, Raghunath Das received the association of pure devotees such as Haridas Thakur and Sri Yadunanda Acharya. And in his early youth, he met Linda Prabhu and his associates. So, so he regularly had the uh, darshan of Haridas Thakur and Yadunanda Acharya. And then in his youth, when I guess he was a teenager or around that age, he actually had the association of Nityananda Prabhu and his associates. There we go. Okay. This influence left a very deep impression upon him in regard to unalloyed devotion. So you can just imagine the influence that these devotees had on him as a young boy and as a youth. He saw the ultimate, not only what is pure bhakti, but what is pure raj bhakti. He very quickly renounced the wealth uh, of his family. So in the literature here, his the wealth of his family was compared to the wealth of King Indra. So King Indra is the most popular, I mean, most wealthy person in the universe. So he, he had so much wealth and he had a very beautiful wife. But he left, just like we were reading, just chanting, I think the fourth verse, glorifying the six Goswamis, it said that they, they, tuch, tuch, they gave up. They were all wealthy and influential, and they gave that all up as if it was nothing. So Raghunath Das also, he gave all that up. Uh, not that he felt like he had to give it up. He just was not interested. He had other things to do. Uh, so when <coughs> eventually he left home, and he went to Puri, to Jagannath Puri, where Lord Chaitanya was, and he submitted himself at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then Lord Chaitanya, he put Raghunath Das under the care uh, of Swarup Damodar. And Swarup Damodar, he was, he was the personal servant and secretary of Lord Chaitanya. So, uh, Actually, sometimes Raghunath Das would inquire directly from Lord Chaitanya. He would ask Lord Chaitanya a question, and Lord Chaitanya would say, he knows better than me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Raghunath Das, he had the nickname as Swarupera Raghu. In other words, he's the Raghu of Swarup, he, like his property. So since that time, he became uh, became known as Rupera Raghunath, or the Raghu of Swarup. And by his mercy, 
he acquired eligibility to render intimate service to Sri Gorasundar. So because he served his spiritual master, his Shiksha Guru, um, Swarup Damodar, so nicely, he became eligible or qualified to be in the intimate service of Lord Chaitanya. Being very pleased with the unflinching dedication to bhajan and exemplary renunciation, Sri Gaurasundar endowed him to serve Sri Giridhari in the form of a Govardhan Shila and Sri Radhika in the form of Gunjamala. So at one particular point, um, Lord Chaitanya Lord Chaitanya had a personal Govind, Govinda a Govardhan rock, or called the Govardhan Shila, that he used to worship. And usually, the Govardhan Shila, often you'll find these red, they're called Gunja beads, and they're the expansion of Radharani. So Lord Chaitanya was so pleased with Raghunath Das that he gave Raghunath Das his personal Govardhan Shila, his deity, along with the uh, Gunja Mala beads representing uh, Radharani. And so uh, this was a great benediction he received from Lord Chaitanya. Gorasundar withdrew his pastimes from the view of this world. Sri Raghunath Das became overwhelmed with the agony of intolerable se separation. So, Anya, he, he only was on the planet for 48 years. And 24 years, he, he lived in Mayapur, in Bengal, as, and as a a young boy, a youth, and then a householder, he took sannyas. And then he moved to Jagannath Puri to be close to his mother. And so that because the devotees in Puri and Mayapur, they, they go back and forth and travel a lot to Rasi Atri, um, Lord Chaitanya's mother asked him, please stay in Jagannath Puri so I can get some news. Right, because we didn't have internet or TV or anything, so that's how you would get news about someone otherwise. But for the first two years, or actually for six years, Lord Chaitanya uh, traveled from Jagannath Puri. He went to South India, he went to Vrindavan. So a total of six years he was traveling. But then the last 18 years of his life, he stayed in Jagannath Puri. And then eventually he disappeared in Jagannath Puri. He went into the uh, Tota Gopinath. Have you been to Jagannath Puri? Mm -hmm. You should come this year with us, with Vaisheshi Kapova and his group. Take a vacation. Uh, anyway, there's a deity there, Tota Gopinath. Tota means short. So the, the, it is said that the deity uh, there was, uh, you know, used to be standing. And the Pujari became so old that he couldn't stand up and put the garland on Gopinath anymore. So Gopinath assumed a sitting position. So we go on to that temple, Radharani standing there, and next to him is a sitting position playing a flute. And it's said that Lord Chaitanya entered into the deity of Tota Gopinath. So he went into the temple and never came out again. He disappeared. And there's a, there's a little mark on the deity's thigh. There's gold, gold three lines. And that's supposed to be the place where Lord Chaitanya entered the deity. So if you go to that temple, they'll, they'll show you. You give some. Maya is involved everywhere. Actually, it, actually, it's not money. If you go to Mongol Arctic, 
wants to know you, then they'll, they'll let you in to the inner area and show you. Uh, so, when Lord Chaitanya left the world, Raghunath Das, he, he felt so much separation that he didn't want to live anymore. So he had a plan. Uh, so Raghunath Das, he left Puri and he went to Vrindavan with the intention of giving up his life by throwing himself off the peak of Sri Govardhan Hill. There, however, he, there have been Sanatana Goswami convinced him to give up this idea by showering him with the nectar of their mercy and sweet Krishna Kata. So when Raghunath Das went to Vrindavan, he immediately got the darshan of Sanatana Goswami and, uh, and Rupa Goswami, and he felt pacified and inspired in their association. So he no longer felt like he uh, wanted to die because when he would hear their Krishna Kata, he felt the association of Lord Chaitanya. And he felt the association of Krishna. So <clears throat> he wasn't depressed anymore. And he overcame the grief of separation that he was feeling. So from that time, he became their, like their third brother, and he took up permanent residence on the bank of Sri Radha Kun. Have you been to Vrindavan? Well, you have to take them to these places. <laughs> uh, so Radha Kun is the most sacred place in Vrindavan. It's where Radha Rani used to take her bath. In a very sacred place. So if you walk around Radha Kund, you'll see there's a place that's where um, Raghunath Das is called the Bhajan Kutir is there. The place where he used to sit and chant is there. And now it's like it's a temple. So there's a temple there and then there's his Kutir. And it's right next to Radha Kund as you go. Radha Kund isn't so big. So you can easily walk around it. And, and around it, there are the sitting places of so many great acharyas. And there's a bhajan kutir of Lord Nityananda. And there's a bhajan kutir of Lord Nityananda's wife. So she's uh, one of the few women acharyas. Uh, there are women acharyas in the, uh, in the Gaudiya Vaishnava line. And, and Lord Nityananda's wife is one of them. So she has her bhajan kutir there. And so uh, that he began to live there at Radhakund. And Radhakund is right at the base of Govardhan Hill. So they're kind of connected there. With severe, severe renunciation. So Raghunath Das was already famous as being very renounced to Jagannath Puri. Uh, but when he moved to Vrindavan and began to live at Radha Kun, his austerities, his renunciation increased even more incredibly, uh, increased more. He became so absorbed in the uh, worship of Radha and Krishna and the Vaishnavas that practically he was unaware of his physical body anymore. So, um, so at a very advanced age, they say he was around 100 years old, um, he would perform his bhajans every day and then he entered into the unmanifest pastimes of the divine couple by entering Radha Kund. So he just entered the Kund and he never came out again.
he entered into the spiritual dimension. It's said that uh, it is understood in, in, in Krishna Leela, his uh, spiritual form is Rati Manjari in Raja Leela. So he's a, one of the Manjaris of Radharani. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Leela, Sri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami has described Raghunath Das's method of bhajan in the following words. Anajala taga kaila anya katana kala dui tina mata karuna bhakshana sahasra dandra vat kare sahasra dandra vat sahasra dandra vat kare laya lakshan mana Dui Sahasra Vaishnavera Nitya Paramana Ratri Dine Radhe Krishnara Manasa Sevana Prahareka Mahaprabhura Chaitara Katana Tina Sadya Radha Kunde Apititapsana Rajavasi Vaishnava Kare Alinganamana Sarda Sapta Prahara Kare Bhaktiras Sadane Nidras Neha Neha Konadine. Sorry, I butchered that Bengali. Please. Uh... <laughs> I'm just a Western Malacca, so what can be done? When Sri Raghunath Das came to Raja, he took up residence at Radha Kun. This is from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. On the order of Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, and became immersed in bhajan in the mood of anguish separation. He practically gave up all food and drink. Every day he accepted only a few ounces of buttermilk in order to sustain his life. He never spoke or listened to mundane talks that had no connection with Krishna Kata. Every day, as a matter of regulation, he offered 1,000 prostrated obeisances unto Shanda, Srimatha Rishavanu Nandini, their eternal pastime associates, and the places of their divine pastimes. So that was 1,000 Dandavats. That would, that would, that would be quite a workout. <laughs> mm. I, I know uh, uh, the Mataji who translates for me in China. Every morning she does uh, dandavats. And it's her exercise, but also her sadhana. And it takes her quite a while. And it's quite a... So he did 1,000 of those. <laughs> He also offered 2,000 obeisances unto different Vaishnavas and chanted 100,000 holy names in one day. So basically that took up all of his time in 24 hours. Day and night he served Radha and Krishna within his mind and he discussed the pastimes of Sriman Mahaprabhu for three hours, bathed in Sri Radha Kun three times daily, they embrace the bridge Vasi Vaishnavas. In this way, he used to perform bhakti for 22 and a half hours a day of 24 hours. So he only slept an hour and a half and the rest of the time he was engaged in this kind of bhajan. Thus, he would sleep for only one hour and a half and some days he would not sleep at all. Only spiritually it's possible. Yes. Yeah. We cannot imitate. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Bye bye. <laughs> Hare Krishna.
He has written three books that are very famous. Sri Stavavali, Sri Dana Charita, or it's also called Dana Kaili Chintamani, and uh, number three, Sri Mukta Charita. This book, Sri Manashiksha, is included within Sri Stavavali, a compilation of prayers and glorifications composed by him. So that's, we find this Manashiksha. 11 verses in the Sri Stavamali. So then a little bit about Bhakti Vinod Thakur and his connection with the Manashiksha. Sri Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur, the eternal associate of Sri Gora Sundar, reinitiated the current of pure devotion in the modern age. Everyone is addicted to material enjoyment, steeped in the glitter of mundane knowledge. So this is saying that Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he revived the teaching of Lord Chaitanya. Sometimes he's called the seventh Goswami. He has written a commentary on the verses of Sri Manashiksha that is rooted in deep philosophical conclusions and full of ras, the liquid mellows of devotion. In this commentary, he has very carefully analyzed every verse in relationship to Raganuga Bhakti or Rupanuga Bhakti. So Rupanuga is a follower of Rupa Goswami. So it's those who practice bhakti according to the guidance of Rupa Goswami. So we're all Rupa Nugas. So he's written his commentary with that in mind. Uh, so this commentary is supported by quotations from Sri Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is written by Rupa Goswami, Ujwala Nilamani, Stavamala, and Stavavali and other Goswami literatures, he has indicated the essential method of bhajan for the benefit of Raganuga sadakas. All Raganuga sadakas will remain forever indebted, indebted, indebted to him for this extraordinary gift. Srila Bhakti Minot Thakur is an intimate associate of Satchitananda Sri Gorasundar who is adorned with the complexion and bob of Sri Radha and who delivers the fallen souls in the age of Kali. Sri Bhakti Vinod appeared in this world in order to spread Sri Harinam Sankirtan and to propagate pure bhakti and in particular Rupanuga, Raganuga bhakti, thus fulfilling the inner longing of Sriman Mahaprabhu. He appeared on the second day of September, 1838, in a highly educated and respected family in the village named Vijanagar, uh, Viranagar, near Sri Mayapur within the district of Sri Navadvitam, West Bengal. He disappeared from the world on the 23rd of June, 1914, in the city of Calcutta. He wrote approximately 100 books on bhakti in Sanskrit, Bengali, Hindi, English, Oriya, and other languages. Amazing. For this reason, enlightened persons have called him the seventh Goswami and the Bhagirat, who initiated the mighty flowing river of bhakti in the modern age. Okay, well. It's about 8.30, so I think we should end there. So tomorrow, um, we'll begin to, uh, to read some verses and some, some commentary. Maybe verse 1 of the Manashiksha and a commentary by Bhakti Vinod Thakur. Okay, Tapasvini Mataji, thank you very much. We're going to end tonight, and then tomorrow 
We'll begin with the first verse of Manashiksha. Mana Shiksha. What does mind? Yeah, mana. And instructions to my mind. You know, when you read the verse, he's talking to his mind. Or our mind. Your mind, my mind. All the same, basically. Our minds are all the same. The same structure, the same ignorance, the same kind of false ego. You know, whether we're talking to our own false ego or somebody else's, it's the same. It's the same design and uh, same mis, uh, same ignorance, same misunderstanding, same kind of forgetfulness. Okay, Raghunath Das Goswami Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.